Hello, Dave here. Welcome to Learn JavaScript with me. This is Chapter 9, Exercise 4, Modal Window, JavaScript and CSS. So to start with, let's, here's the book that we're working through, Modern JavaScript, Develop and Design. It was written by Larry Ullman, picked it up off of Amazon. Don't know Larry Ullman, but I'm learning JavaScript from him, and hopefully we'll both learn some JavaScript together. I've created uh, just a bunch of pages out here so that I can learn how to do JavaScript uh, and, and how it works with the HTML and CSS and work things together. And out here at DaveCoast.com, I have a nav bar item called LearningJavaScript.com. It'll take you to js.davecoast.com. And this is js.dave. It'll look the same as what I was just looking at over here. And I'm just working on my local XAMPP server. So I'll, uh, let's go back here for a second so we can check this post out, get a little housekeeping out of the way. So out here in this post, you can go to js.davecoast.com. You're welcome to go directly there at any time. These uh, examples are out there. You can go out put them in debug, uh, enjoy, see what's happening with them, play around, get a feel for them. Uh, there's a link to LarryOlman.com if you're interested uh, in any other additional information regarding the book. And here's the code that I've used to work these exercises. So let's go ahead, jump right in. Going back here, and again, working in local uh, XAMPP server and have a bunch of exercises out here. We're in Chapter 9, Exercise 4, Modal Window. Here's what uh, the exercise looks like. And I just have a bunch of silly text around here. The important thing is, is notice there's a button here, and it says Show Window. And if I click it, well, look at that. It kind of makes it so the rest of the screen is unavailable. And we have the screen on top of everything else, and it has a button to go back to normal. So we show a window, and we close that window. This is the modal window, and this is how we interact between JavaScript and the CSS to make that happen. And let's go ahead. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the code in the editor, then we'll jump into firebug to get a good feel of what's going on. So here is the code. This is the actual JavaScript code. And bottom up. So we start out with window.onload. So when the window's loaded, we execute an anonymous function, anonymous because it has no name, and one uh, key statement in this function, it does a document get element by ID, which sets a reference to this element on the page. Turn on and dot on click goes ahead and starts an event listener and it executes open modal window. So that's that button that I clicked to make everything happen. So now we have a function up here, right? Because this is calling a function, a function up here. And notice that you don't have any of the arguments specified on the function when you're doing this on click. So we execute the open modal window function. And it does three key statements here. I'll document get element by ID. So the first thing it does is it turns on an event listener for the close button. So we have to turn on that close button. Then here's the new information that we're learning. We're using the style display uh, methods, right, off of this element by ID. So dot style dot display, and we're changing it to inline block. So this modal ID, this element, we're basically making it visible here 
and I probably should not use the word visible because that has additional meaning, but we are changing its display attribute to inline block. And we'll, we'll, we'll walk through the actual HTML of these variables in a moment, but you'll notice that this modal ID is right here, and we also have the CSS for it, and modal ID starts out with display equal none. And, and we'll take a, a deeper look at those two files in a moment. But let's go ahead and buzz through here. We don't have that many statements. Then we do document get element by ID, the show window ID, and we set that listener to null and basically turn that one off. So this one is turned on at the beginning uh, when the window is loaded. But now we turn it off and we turn on the close window. And that's, you know, makes sense. So here's the show window. It's turned on when the window is loaded. And now that's turned off, but this one is turned on, the close window. And that is the key open window. And notice that, right, we turned on this listener. So when that button is pressed, we're going to execute the close window. That's pretty much the inverse of this function up here. So close. Does the document get element by ID? Show window ID dot on click. So it'll set the event listener. And when it is clicked, it'll do the open modal window. So it'll jump back up to here. And it does the document get element by ID, modal ID, style display none. So it turns the display back to none. So that that modal window is no longer visible. And it'll go ahead and turn off the event listener on the closed modal ID. So pretty straightforward, but pretty spiffy nonetheless. It just goes to show us that we don't need to have uh, tons of lines of code. So let's take a look at the HTML here. And here's the page with my goofy stuff all around it. But let's go ahead up to the top here. And we see we have two style sheets defined, right? One is my standard style sheet. That I've been using all along and it's in the CSS folder and it's just called styles.css and again you can welcome to download it and it's visible from debugger out at js.davecoast.com and now here's our new CSS and we'll take a look at that in a moment and I just called it chapter 9 or ch9 modal window.css and even gave it an ID um, W for modal window CSS. So two style sheets now. And at the very bottom, here's our uh, JavaScript script tags. And here in the middle, here's the important pieces, right? This section area here. And I don't have the closing section tag. Bad, bad boy. But anyway, this article area. How's that for calling an audible? Anyway, so this article area, the main area, has, you know, the various text out there. It's got demo div and demo intro. And here's just some, some text. Here's the button. Standard button, type button. Give it an ID right here so that we could do this. Get element by ID, show window ID. And give it a class. Then here's a paragraph tag. And then down here, here's the, the new spiffy stuff for our modal. Give it an ID called modal ID. Then we have another div underneath there. And it's called modal mask ID. And this is the div that does the uh, the grayscale so that it, it makes it look like everything else was turned off, or this basically turns off the rest of the screen, while modal content ID is the div that is actually the new window. And it just has some, some text on there and a button to go back to the standard method, or basically let's close the modal window. 
So the associated, there's only three pieces or three uh, selectors in the CSS land. Our first one is on the modal ID, sets it display none, nothing special here, position absolute, right? So this is the modal ID uh, zero, zero, and it basically takes up the whole screen. Then we have this modal mask and, you know, absolute takes up the whole screen. The important piece here is this Z index is a thousand. And this is a number that's less than this Z index down here because we want our modal content to be on top. And look up Z index if you have questions on that. And it sets this opacity. And here's for the multiple different browsers of, op of opacity types, right? And it sets this opacity to 90%. And that's what gives us that, you know, great outlook. And then here's our content. Uh, and I just made it, uh, you know, 400 pixels wide. Gave it some, uh, gave it some border. Uh, it, it does have uh, relative positioning. And I moved it over. This is just centering it in the screen with the 350 pixels uh, from the top and bottom and the auto there from the sides to put it in the center. Gave it some padding and some coloring. Uh, put the text in the center. But again, the only key item here is that this Z index number is greater than this Z index number. So let's go ahead, take a brief look at it again here, right? Click this button. Ooh, there's the opacity at 90%, so we can still see the other screen through it. And here's our modal content, right? Here's the modal content ID with a button. And I click that button and return back to where we were before. Now let's take a quick look in Firebug. And all we need to do here is mess around with the console a little bit to drive these concepts home. So let me detach this. And I have a, a console window here. And I'm just going to put a console window. And let's put it like this. Oops. Yep, let me open that up a little more. There we go. And get this into position. Sorry for the delay. I'm just trying to make it so it's visible. And what I'm going to do here is mess around with this part of the page here so we can see these attributes. And I'll open up that more if we need some more space. But let's go ahead and start. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it demo B for demo button. And I'm going to set that equal to the document dot get element by ID and this is you know what I'm going to put this down on a separate line here and see if we can keep everything visible and this is going to be our show window ID. So this is the button, this button here. All right. Now if I run that, I've gone ahead and created my reference to that button. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a variable and I'm going to go ahead and do a demo D for my demo div and basically do the same thing. Create the reference. And this one's going to be demo div, just to see some differences here. 
let's go ahead and execute that set up that reference now we have that reference so let's do demo d dot style dot display so here's our here's the important command here and I highly recommend going out there, playing around. Nothing better than the console for getting a feel for it. And I'm going to set that to none. And let's run that. Oh, and look at that. It all disappeared. Let's go ahead and set it back to uh, block. And bring it back. Come on back. There it is. Now it's back again. I did the whole demo div. Um, that wasn't my plan. And again, I could do the exact same thing. Right? I'm just going to control C and copy that. And change that to my button, demo B. And if I change the display to none, watch what happens. I run that. Notice that it scrunched this up because I did the display none. Now I'm going to change the display back to block or inline block. And I would uh, look up the display differences and values there. Uh, the key thing here is uh, we're talking about hiding an element. It can be done by setting the display property to none or the visibility property to hidden. Notice the differences in the two, uh, in the two methods here. So that's, that's doing the, the display method. Now let's do demo b.style.visibility. And I'm going to change this to hidden. And this is the big lesson here. Ah. Notice that when you just hide it, it still retains its space in the page, whereas when I did the display none, it totally removed it from the page. So that's the important piece of the lesson here with the style visibility. And I can make it visible again. And let's click run. And here's our button back, happy as can be. Okay, so there's there's uh, that that was the key part of what we were learning with this exercise. And here's uh, another piece of the puzzle. And we can do create another variable, and I'm going to call it demo b styles, and this is going to be equal to window dot get computed style and I'm going to call this demo B so now what this will do this gets all of the styles and places them into this variable and there's zillions of them but it's basically accessing the DOM and this is uh, the next step of you know we're in exercise four, so this is additional DOM manipulation. So now, and, and this, you can't change them, but you can utilize them. For example, I can do demo B styles dot font size. I'll run that. And if you look over here, it shows me that it is. 15 pixels. Yay, and that's very nice. All right, you see here's all of the, uh, the other commands that I've been running. I've just been scrunching this down so we can see the whole thing. But let's just look at another one of these guys. I'll just control C, control V to make a copy of that. And, you know, you can look at other things. Um, margin top for some reason just plain margin it doesn't show all the values 
it just shows it as a blank, but if I run margin top, oh, it's 20 pixels from the top. Here's that 20 pixels. And one more for the fun of it, just because why not? And I could do something like border top style. And let's get a hair more space here. Border top style. I run that, and we see that it is set to outset. And that's my goofy borders that I'm playing around here just to keep them visible and on the screen. So that is uh, the key methods, the display, um, the display, the style dot display, style dot visibility, and get computed style. Go ahead and look those up and play around with them in the console. And that's what this lesson was all about. And the way we showed it was, let me go ahead and reattach this to the bottom. And I'm going to turn off Firebug. Click our show modal window. There it is with our uh, Z index, placing this behind this window here. So this has a, uh, what, a higher number for its Z index which where it is placed on the screen, and a little button to turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Yay. So thank you very much. This has been Chapter 9, the Browser 4 modal window. We can dynamically show the modal content. And basically just showing that I can read this silly text on the screen. But uh, comments, questions, concern. Um, Dave at DaveCoast.com or leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Thank you very much for watching.